Hi, I'm Mark Richard Adams, post-production specialist. Thanks for joining me today on Colour Me In for another post-production demonstration. Hi, and welcome back. Today we're gonna to do a video about end of edits. Now I've done end of edits previously in longer videos for Premiere, but this is gonna be an end of edit specifically for Avid Media Composer. Um, we have a sequence here um, uh, that I want to get um, to my final post. And that's sort of what an end of edit is. An end of edit is sending your picture lock, which is your sequence here that you're happy with, uh, with all the audio and video to, uh, uh, to the grade and also to the audio mix, okay? So it's an end of edit. So there are three things that we need to do. Firstly, we want to export um, uh, an AF for Resolve, Let, you know, or your grading application, but we're gonna use Resolve as an example here. So what I'm doing is I'm highlighting all my video cha uh, channels and all my audio channels and marking an in at the top and an out at the end. And then I'm gonna to go to my sequence. I'm going to right click, go to output, export to file, and I'm going to change the options, okay? Now, in here, I do need it to be an AF. I want to use marks and you select tracks, that's fine. If we look here though, um, this is uh, vision only for Resolve, so I don't need to include the audio, I can turn that off, okay? And I want to link to, don't export the media. Now, what this is gonna do, as long as your media drive is attached to the system you have Resolve installed on, the media will link, okay? So that's really important. Okay, um, so you click save and then choose a location. What I'm gonna do for now, I'm just gonna go to the desktop, I'm gonna hit new folder, I'm gonna call this end of edit, okay, create. Now on there, uh, inside that folder, so it's logical, now I want to do is create another folder called AAF underscore resolve. So this is for resolve. And then I'm gonna save that into that folder. And you can see actually what, what Avid does, it places that new AAF back into the bin. And if we double click on it, you can see, look, there is the AF of the vision only. Look, there's no audio. So that's the new sequence. Um, we need to know now, go back to the old sequence in order to do the rest. So go back to the old sequence, you can see everything's there. And let's do the audio now for Pro Tools. So we click on the sequence, output, export to file, and go to options again. Now, we will sort of want to do the reverse. So all these are the same, but we don't want to include the video, but we do want to include the audio, really important. Um, this is where it's slightly different. I don't want you to link to the media. Generally, Pro Tools are on our separate systems, not unless you have a Nexus attached, perhaps. So probably the best thing to do is consolidate the media, okay? Consolidate the audio media, and you can see I've got handles of 60 frames there. Normally, there would be 150, uh, but you know, I'm, I'm going to just put 25 in for the moment, but probably standard an audio mixer would want 150 frames on, on that. Okay, go down, ignore this stuff. We don't really need to anything, we don't need to worry about anything there. Um, the audio, um, where is it going to go? Well, we want the audio to be embedded in the AF folder that we create or the AF file that we create. So that's really important. So we're going to make new media, consolidated media, so it's brand new media into. Uh, an AF embedded file. Hit save. Let's choose a location. So if I step back to the end of edit folder, I'm going to make a new folder, AAF, and call this Pro Tools. Okay, logical. So everyone can find it. Hit save. And now Avid is going to make those AF files. And what it does, again, Avid uh, makes new files and brings them into uh, Avid for you. And you can see there's another sequence been generated. So if I open that up, you can see it's just the audio sequence. We can just see the audio now. And there's the resolve one and there's the master one, okay? Now, the final thing we need to do is make a Bitsy QuickTime guide. A Bitsy QuickTime guide is a burnt in time code guide of this sequence that we're on at the moment because your Pro Tools engineer and your resolve grader will want to see a guide so they know that the vision and the audio from the offline or the pitch lock is accurate to what they have in the sequence and also the time code as well. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna disable all these channels here um, and I want to lay a time code reader onto the video layer 10, uh, which is gonna be the Bitsy. So if I go to effects, I'm gonna go to search and go to time code. There's the time code there. I'm gonna drag that on, plop that onto the sequence and we can see it's there. And you can see, look, here is the time code reader there, perfect. Um, you know, you can reposition that if you want to by going to effects, but that's fine for me for the moment. What I'm now going to do is I'm going to export 
this sequence, video and audio together. So I'm gonna highlight all my tracks, even the empty ones, and I'm gonna mark an in at the beginning and an out at the end. Everything's highlighted there. And I'm gonna go back to my bins, and I'm gonna to go to the sequence that I'm looking at here, which is this one. Um, I'm going to output, export to file, and I'm going to choose options again. Now in options, I want to choose uh, MOV for now. And Avid has changed from pre-2018, so this is slightly different, but the preset, all this is fine if, if you, are, you work on a HD project, aspect ratio, that's all fine. Frame rate's fine, <clears throat> this is all looking good, but the codec family is, we will need to change. We don't want it to be, you know, that massive DNX codec series. So I'm just gonna knock it down to H.264, and that'll be fine. So it's a lower quality file. It doesn't need to be high, it doesn't need to be high quality at all. It just needs to be viewable, and, and we can hear what's going on too. So it's exporting the video, and it's exporting the audio. Uh, we click O. Oh, Save and we're going to choose location. So let's step back to the Eerie folder and hopefully you'll understand now that we're going to want to have another folder. We're going to call it burnt in timecode uh, underscore guide. Okay, create and save. And we're now exporting that file. Okay, and while that's exporting, that's all we need. There are three files that, that our engineers are going to need. They're going to need the AF for the vision, they're going to need the AF embedded for the audio, and they're going to need a Bitsy guide. So let's wait until this exports and then I'll show you the results. Great, we're done. Let's minimize and let's on the desktop look at that end of edit folder. Okay, in the end of edit folder, what do we have? We have our three folders, our AF for our Pro Tools. You can see that's 35 megs, so there's something in that folder. Uh, AF for Resolve, you can see that it's 1.2 megs. So it's small, there's no media attached to it, it's just metadata, it's just our sequence in a metadata form, okay? And then we have our Bitsy guide. We can see that we've got our Bitsy on screen there, which is great, good. Um, I hope you enjoyed that video, and I hope this uh, video helps you preparing your end of edits for your exports to Pro Tools and Resolve. I hope you've enjoyed that video. Please give me a like or subscribe or type in down below demos you'd like to see next. Catch you next time.